hello guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new to my channel hello and welcome to my channel my name is summer so i want to share this story with you guys uh, because as always you know when i feel there is something we can learn from a story i like to come here and share it and that is why i like your comments i read and i learn we all wrap minds and you know in discussions so this story that just broke about um, an Igbo man a young man from uh, ututu in abia state so this guy actually has a Facebook page and um, he went on his Facebook page and made a post. Okay, let me read to you guys word for word what he posted so that at least you're following the story uh, properly. So he posted and said, today, as at the time I took the screenshot, it was 20 hours prior. So today is my last day on earth. Um, I am, he meant to say, okay, he said, I'm going to meet my maker. Thank you, Chima. Uh, Chim, Chima Onyaso. Ikukoma Abia. Kelvin Jumbo Onuma. Ekweme Ohafia. And my friends. My spirit is with you all. And so people thought it was cloud. So people felt this is serious. And a lot of comments were flooding. Oh, don't do this. What is it? Talk to us. A lot of comments were just coming and just kind of tried to talk him out of it two hours later that means it took him two hours after he made the post to come to try to do a live video and even in that live video you can see the comments people were trying to reach out to him um if you look at it you see the he tried to go live you can tell he was in tears and somebody said guy what did happen people were still trying to reach out to him this one said, Yawuru Gini as a Nibo language, as a meaning what? As a, as a, you know, a kilo day, you know, that basic, that's basically what that is. Another comment said, hope all is well. One name, one name is sibling. This is making me emotional. Okay. Okay. So another comment, what is happening, sir? And he turned off the video. So while he was all of that, people were panicking. And this person said, my problem now is, is that no one can really say what is going on exactly. Please, who has his number? And this lady replied, I called him. He kept, he kept busy my call. Chukuma refused to talk to anyone. See, this one says, what's the problem, bro? Men can still come to your rescue. So that same lady yeah, that, uh, that already said she was trying to call him came back again and wrote, wrote and said Jesus she said Jesus oh my heart is heavy when I saw when I saw this I thought it was a joke I called your number with called your numbers it was busy I tried more than six times it kept on being busy Chukuma why sorry I didn't tell you guys his name his name is um, Ono Chukuma Richard that's his name so while he took down that video at that time people were texting each other i mean commenting and saying whoever knows him go and reach out to him because that's the thing about social media the people that may be seeing it at that moment may not be people that are related or people that are even know him in real life but people were like who knows him check up on him you know people started bombarding the comments and start saying all of that and the next thing <clears throat> and the next thing people started commenting people that know him started commenting i mean making posts and tagging him and telling people that it was not a prank he did it for real they've taken him to the hospital and then later on they said can somebody help us we want to move him to a bigger hospital and all of that and um, and he was gone he was gone he was gone there are several angles i want to address but let me address this first there are people that make fun of him even on that, that post I don't know where people have the heart. I read to you guys one of the comments that I saw there. And it's a woman with a profile photo. Uh, I'm thinking it's a woman. It's a woman's name as well. Her name is Gracious Grace. She says, please, before you go, hand your ATM card to me and the pin. I said, make those that want to continue living enjoy Christmas. Oh, I, meant, I think I meant to say, continue living, enjoy. Christmas is around the corner. That's what she wrote. And somebody replied to her and said, you people should stop playing with things like this. Now he is gone. You know what I mean? And she's, she, you would have thought even when he actually finally, his life finally ended, that she would sit back and say, oh my goodness. Oh, I thought he was joking. No, she came back and she replied. 
right? And said, Mami buy him sniper. He made his choice, Biko. And the person said, really, honestly, I'm disgusted and disappointed. Even at this point, you are still sounding funny, ne? GCK. GCK is like, okay, basically continue. Well done, but it's a, you're sad. It's saying well done, but it's almost like saying, yeah, continue, like, you know, in a disapproving way. Another area I want to address is when something like this happened and people want to point fingers and say, where was his, fa uh, where was the family? Where were your friends? You guys failed him. You guys, you don't know if they failed him. Another mistake we make is, you know, we say, okay, this person's life is ended. Everybody gets so uh, emotional about that. And uh, we forget that because that person's life ended doesn't mean that the people that are around do not have miseries as well. Do not have things that they are struggling with. But because they are hanging on, we focus on the one that is gone. And we bash the ones that are still alive. And if care is not taken, if that, is, that, that if care is not taken, they can end up being another person that will drink something tomorrow. So people need to be careful about pointing figures and saying, his friends failed him. You don't know what his friends and family they are going through in their own lives too. Everybody is trying to hang on here. A lot of people have struggles. Okay, let me read this. This may give a bit more perspective to what was going on. This is a text message apparently between him and somebody. And this person said, he replied and said, he was the one that replied to the person and said, received, sir. Thank you, sir. The person that said, noted. So I don't know what the person gave him. He said, the only option is to end my life as I cannot live with the shame. The only option is to end my life as I cannot live with the shame. His Excellency, sir, please come to my rescue. Right? I have turned into a gambler because no job. And right now, I am at a point, if I don't redeem my debt, I might ill myself to pay the debt. I used 2.5 million to place a bet, and 1.2 is not my own. Uh, and if I don't pay up today, I will be dead by the time you read this message. As I type this message, I am where I want to buy Sniper. The person said, tell the people to hold on so you pay small, small. I'm out of cash now, but can give something when I have. What is the time frame given to you to repay the loan? Well, oh, this person even tried, you understand, to say, okay, I'll give what I can and everything. So, but I want to speak about, don't point fingers at people, friends and family. People have their own struggles. Just when he was alive, there's somebody, if... When he was alive, imagine somebody in his life that ended their lives. You may think <clears throat> that decided to end their life. You may also say, ah, why did he not help the person? But you wouldn't know that he has his own struggles. So I'm not a fan of this finger pointing at people. I'm not a fan of it. On the other hand, there are some people that do not sympathize with him because they're like, why would you do such a thing? And um, I'm, I'm not too quick to kind of speak against someone that his life is gone because he's not even here to speak for himself but let me read to you guys what this person posted the person tagged him and said i'm posting you so that people will learn i'm not posting you to feel pity for you never it's only greediness that could have pushed you into doing what ought not to have been done betting sight will always tell you stake responsibly and stake what you can afford to lose that makes sense he's speaking the truth about betting Make sure that something that if you lose it, you won't feel it. Like I said, many parts of the world people play $10, one, uh, 1 euro, 5 euro. It's like if they don't win it, it doesn't affect their lives. Do you know what I mean? He said, whatever that had made you take this part doesn't worth it. You allow the pressure of the world and that of fake life to overwhelm you. I pity your poor home and, pray, and parents, especially your mother, if she's still alive. It's heartbreaking for your family and closed ones. Nothing should warrant you to take your life. Whatever I have today is enough for me. I strive to be perfect and work so hard to better my living and that of my life. Fake life, pressure from social media, influence from your peers it can get to me. I know my opinion. May God forgive you big time. So, um, at the end of the day, I'm making this video to say this. You know, I've always been a believer of the fact that where we know is where we are right now we don't know okay we know what the bible says or what your quran tells you whatever your religion tells you but we know it from what the, they say we've not been there we've not experienced it in my language we say 
the one I'm holding on to is greater. Meaning, just like the saying, the, um, the bird at hand is what millions in the bush, two in the bush, whatever. So we hold on to what we have. What we have right now is this life. What we know is this life. We don't know what are your guarantees that where you are going after you end it all is better than where you are living. What are the guarantees? Because even in Christianity, they said ending it by yourself. Christianity says heaven and hell, right? Okay, heaven or hell. But the Bible tells us that ending it by yourself is the direct route to hell. So why, if you want to go by Christianity, because I know somebody may be like, I'm not a Christian, I'm, you know, you may be a Muslim, whatever, so it may not be applying to you in your head because what I'm saying does not apply to you because of your religion. But let me speak from the religion that I, or the faith that I know. So the thing then is, if we go by Christianity, then he's not going to go to heaven. So he's going to be in a, a worse place than where he left. The life we have is what we have. And I think sometimes, I like to say this, you know, we should see life as, is, is more than us as individuals. You know, your life is important to you, but you are important to a lot of people. You are important to your brothers and sisters, your father, your mother, your friends or whatever. You understand? So, um, what about that saying that when there is life, there is hope. There is no longer hope. When it's over, it's over. But when there is life, there is hope that tomorrow may be better. I grew up in Benin and I've shared my stories of growing up in poverty and I was born into wealth. My father was the richest man in my village, like very rich. But eventually things changed and we experienced, and we experienced poverty. And I can tell you that I know what poverty is. And if I was to judge life according to how it was at the times when I was poor and suffering, when I came to Europe, I suffered too. I, I ended up going to college to study nursing. But before I got there, I, I suffered. But I was always whole, I was always keeping hope alive. You know that belief that tomorrow will be better than today is what kept me. And by the grace of God, if I tell you guys, I don't share my story how I take back here at the end of Bodo Yibo. If I tell you my story, look at me today now. I'm not the richest person in the world. I have a roof over my head. Look at me. See, do you know what I'm trying to say? It, is, it only ends. The hope will end when the life is over. As long as there is life, there is hope. I'm here talking. You know, oh, look at some. Do you think I have no struggles? Of course I have struggles. I have a lot of struggles. We we'll wake up every morning and we smile. And it's going to be, a, I don't want it to be a, a long video, but I want to say something else about social media pressure because we don't know exactly what pushed this guy. But I believe to a great extent we should speak about social media pressure because we're seeing it on a daily. And I'm going to tell you guys that you can choose not to be pressured. Choose to be unpressurable. You can live your simple life. Shabi, remember when people tried to drag me for doing the same hairstyle 24 7 doing the same hairstyle for years and years i know they change hairstyle it didn't stop me you know why i have contentment i love my hairstyle you can do whatever hairstyles you want it didn't bother me look over i've been making the same hairstyle for over uh maybe 15 years at this point maybe let's say about for about 15 years 14 13 i'm not even sure anymore I like it, it suits me, it's cheap, it's affordable. I buy attachment, pick and drop, that's it. I remember made a video not too long ago where I was talking about how I want to change it to dreadlocks. And even the dreadlocks, this is my aim, the same style. When my hair was being made fun of, it didn't bother me because I'm happy with my life. People come here and look, oh, so where did you buy your dress? And they buy sheen. If I like it, I buy it. I'm walking past a charity shop, second-hand shop, and I see a dress that I like, I will go and buy it. Because I like it. This one I'm wearing, you're looking at now. Look at this. I'm wearing, what's it called? Timu. Is it Timu? I call it Timu. My children say it's not Timu, it's Timu. Timu. Even my children say Timu have bad things. I say, no, there are some things in Timu that are okay. This dress is from Timu. I can't even remember how much I bought it. I like it. I buy it. You can choose to refuse to be pressured. You can choose to be unpressurable. Our world is full of pressures. Full of pressures left, right and center. You know, nobody chose to be born. We wake up, see ourselves, they don't burn us. We're born without being asked. And we're all trying to make the best of it. But we ain't in need. We're trying to make the best of the life we have. Because we're already here, what can we do? It's to leave it and leave it to the best of our ability. I wanted to share that. If you're watching this, hopefully my message gets to you. Today it's him. Tomorrow it could be somebody else. Hopefully my video speaks to somebody today. And please, 
leave your opinions and your comments or whatever in the comment section as well so that other people can read and be encouraged we're here let's make the best of this one life that we have see we will all die at the end of the day there's no point in rushing it it will happen we're only praying for long life i am praying for long life you know, let's live the best that we can and as long as you know god gives us hopefully to a good you know let's pray for to live long lives but at the end of the day, when it ends, you know, we can say, yeah, you know, we lived to the best of our abilities. I don't know, whatever encouraging words you can leave in the comment section. For anybody that may be going through that kind of a thinking at the moment, please leave them in the comment section below. And um, with that, I'm going to say thank you for watching. Until the next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.